In the heart of Africa's most remote wilderness, local villagers witnessed something that defied all explanation. A narrow canyon that had been bone dry for generations suddenly filled with a river of blood-red water, flowing with such intensity that the ground trembled beneath their feet. The mysterious crimson stream appeared overnight, and for months no one could understand where it came from or why it burned bright red like liquid fire. The first reports came from cattle herders, who had been using the canyon as shelter during the scorching afternoon heat. For decades, their families had rested in the shade of these towering rock walls, knowing the ancient gorge as nothing more than a dried riverbed filled with sun-bleached stones and scattered bones of animals that had sought water long ago. But on that fateful morning in March, everything changed. Kofi, a herder who had walked this path since childhood, heard something that made his blood run cold. A deep, rumbling sound echoed from within the canyon walls, growing louder with each passing minute. At first, he thought it might be distant thunder, but the sky was perfectly clear. Then came the sound of rushing water, which seemed impossible in this drought-stricken region. When Kofi peered over the canyon's edge, he couldn't believe what he saw. A torrent of dark red liquid was surging through the narrow passage below, moving with such force that it carved new channels into the ancient rock. The water looked thick, almost syrupy, and it glowed with an unnatural crimson hue that seemed to pulse in the sunlight. Word spread quickly through the surrounding villages, Within hours, dozens of people had gathered at the canyon's rim, staring in stunned silence at the phenomenon below. Some whispered that it was a sign from their ancestors. Others feared it was blood from the earth itself. The elders had never seen anything like it, and their stories passed down through generations contained no mention of such an event. Dr. Chloe Mwangi, a hydrologist working with the Regional Water Authority, received the call on a Tuesday afternoon. A voice on the other end was frantic, describing a river of blood that had materialised from nowhere. Her first instinct was to dismiss it as folklore or exaggeration, but the caller was a government official she had worked with for years. He was not prone to flights of fancy. Within 48 hours, Dr. Mwangi had assembled a small research team and made the gruelling journey to the remote location. Nothing could have prepared her for what she witnessed. The narrow canyon, which measured roughly 200 metres long and barely 15 metres wide at its broadest point, was filled with rushing red water that moved with tremendous velocity. The team's initial observations were puzzling. The water temperature was surprisingly warm, measuring nearly 10 degrees higher than typical groundwater in the region. The colour was unlike anything they had encountered before, a deep burgundy that seemed to shift between red and brown, depending on the angle of the light. Most mysteriously, there was no obvious source for the water. The canyon walls showed no signs of springs or underground streams that could account for such volume. Dr. Mwangi collected samples immediately, noting that the liquid had an unusual consistency and a distinct metallic odour that made her team members cover their noses. Under her portable microscope, the water revealed strange particles that didn't match any known mineral deposits from the area. The pH levels were also abnormally high, indicating extreme alkalinity that could explain the water's corrosive effect on the surrounding rock. Local authorities were baffled. Environmental officials had no record of industrial activity in the region that could account for contamination. Mining operations were hundreds of kilometres away, and there were no factories or chemical plants anywhere near the canyon. The mystery deepened when satellite imagery revealed that the Red River had appeared literally overnight, with no gradual build-up or warning signs. As news of the phenomenon spread, theories began to emerge from every corner of the scientific community. Some geologists suggested it could be related to underground volcanic activity, pointing to the elevated temperature and unusual mineral content. Others proposed that ancient sediment deposits had been disturbed by seismic activity, releasing iron-rich materials that gave the water its distinctive colour. 
However, none of these explanations could account for the sudden appearance of such massive water volume in a region experiencing severe drought. Weather records showed no significant rainfall in the area for months, and groundwater levels throughout the region were at historic lows. Where was all this water coming from? And why was it appearing now? Was it the mystery became even more intriguing when Dr. Mwangi's team discovered that the Red River was not just flowing through the canyon, but actively changing the landscape around it. The highly alkaline water was dissolving certain types of rock while leaving others untouched, creating bizarre formations that looked almost alien against the familiar African terrain. As word of the discovery reached international scientific circles, researchers from around the world began proposing their own theories, but none of them could explain the most puzzling aspect of all. The most baffling element was discovered three weeks after the initial sighting. Dr. Mwangi's team had set up monitoring equipment along the canyon walls to track the water's flow patterns and chemical composition over time. What they found challenged everything they thought they knew about hydrology. The Red River was flowing uphill, not just slightly uphill, but at a measurable gradient that defied gravity itself. Water samples taken from different points along the canyon showed that the liquid was moving from lower elevations to higher ones, something that should have been physically impossible without an external pumping mechanism. This discovery prompted an emergency consultation with Dr. James Okafor, a renowned geophysicist from the University of Cape Town. When he arrived at the site, his first reaction was complete disbelief. He spent two days rechecking measurements and calibrating instruments, convinced there had to be an error in the data collection. But the readings were accurate. The crimson water was, indeed, defying one of the most fundamental laws of physics. And Dr. Okafor knew there had to be an explanation rooted in science, not magic. The breakthrough came when his team began drilling core samples from the canyon floor. At a depth of nearly 40 meters, they struck something unexpected. Instead of solid rock, their drill bit penetrated into a vast underground chamber filled with pressurized gas. The moment the chamber was breached, the mystery began to unravel. Deep beneath the canyon lay an enormous pocket of carbon dioxide gas that had been building pressure for thousands of years. This gas had been seeping up through microscopic cracks in the rock, but recent seismic activity had opened larger fissures, allowing the pressurized gas to escape more rapidly. The gas was pushing against an underground aquifer that contained water with extremely high concentrations of dissolved iron oxide. When the pressure reached a critical point, it forced this iron-rich water up through the canyon floor like a massive natural fountain. The iron oxide gave the water its blood-red appearance, while the high alkalinity explained its unusual chemical properties. But the uphill flow remained puzzling until Dr. Okafor made another crucial discovery. The underground gas pocket wasn't just pushing water upward. It was creating a continuous pressure differential along the length of the canyon. Gas escaping from multiple points created a natural pumping system that forced the water to flow against gravity. Think of it like a giant underground bellows system. As pressurized gas escaped from one end of the chamber, it created suction that pulled more water from the opposite direction. This continuous cycle maintained the uphill flow that had baffled the research team for weeks. The metallic odor that had bothered the researchers was hydrogen sulfide gas mixed with the carbon dioxide, a combination that often occurs in areas with high iron content. The elevated temperature resulted from the geothermal heating of the underground chamber, where the water had been sitting for possibly centuries before being forced to the surface. Local geological surveys confirmed that the region sat atop an ancient volcanic system that had been dormant for millennia. While there was no active volcanic activity, the underground chambers and gas pockets were remnants of that ancient system, slowly building pressure over thousands of years, until recent Earth movements provided the perfect conditions for release. The timing of the phenomenon coincided with a series of minor earthquakes that had occurred in the region several months earlier. These tremors, barely noticeable to local residents, had been strong enough to crack open the sealed chambers deep underground, setting the stage 
for the dramatic appearance of the Red River. Within six months, the flow began to diminish as the underground pressure equalized. The brilliant red color faded to a rusty brown, and eventually the water flow stopped altogether. The canyon returned to its previous dry state, leaving behind only mineral deposits and strange rock formations as evidence of the extraordinary event. Dr. Mwangi published her findings in the International Journal of Hydrology, where the case became known as the Crimson Canyon phenomenon. Her research provided valuable insights into how underground gas pockets can create unexpected water flow patterns, contributing to our understanding of geophysical processes in volcanic regions. The local villagers, meanwhile, had their own interpretation of events. To them, the Red River had been a gift from the earth, a reminder of the powerful forces that lay hidden beneath their feet. Some began using the mineral-rich deposits left behind as natural dyes for their textiles, creating beautiful red fabrics that told the story of the mysterious river. Today, the canyon stands empty once again, but scientists continue to monitor the area for signs of future activity. The underground chambers may rebuild pressure over time, potentially creating another spectacular display decades or even centuries from now. What seemed like an impossible miracle turned out to be a perfect storm of geological conditions, proving once again that nature's mysteries often have logical explanations waiting to be discovered by those brave enough to seek the truth.